go. What's up, everybody? Uh, this is Lamont Coleon with the Colossal Masters. Uh, just doing a little video, checking out the dogs. Uh, I've got on uh, reaching uh, everybody area. It is raining now here, though. Where it was raining at least, but still ain't stopping on. Gotta get out here and make it do what it do, so. Still yeah, put a little bleach down, hose everything down, keeping it clean, everything for the dogs. Everybody got fresh water, stuff like that. Uh, my girl uh, Zara, my pilot captain. My girl Zara right here. Uh, she just turned one in August, or well, last month. Uh, still got a good two years of growing and do filling now. Be a real nice girl, full of bra. As you can see, real nice structure, good sentiment. Uh, like I said, they all work, so I let video to prove it just in case anybody questioning. Uh, a lot of people have seen it though. But anyway, uh, I got my girl Kefla over here. She turned one in November, uh, November 21st. Red, burned the wheel mahogany. See, man, that's what they call it. My lens a little jack, but I still kind of get a little good uh, view of her. Trying to get them, make it look clear. She see good structure, good temperament, uh, real good work. I just had a bur first uh, bike session last weekend, but it's past weekend. Uh, yeah, terrific. Uh, real confident. Uh, a lot of fire. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't expect nothing less, really. Uh, real confident dogs. Uh, that's what the Colossal Master do. A working master. Uh, like I say, the goal is, I mean, to continue on to do is try to get a, a real working dog that, that can compete with the Connie Corsos, the Presses, the Warbles, uh, stuff like that. Uh, so far, so good. I think I'm kind of right now lead with those guys or with those breeds. Uh, actually, uh, they're similar in size, similar in look. I get a lot of people who think that they corsos and presses and stuff like that, but they're not. Uh, they're Colossal Masters. Uh, I've been working on them for 15 years. And uh, like I say, I ain't done. It's just get better and better at these best years to go back. Like I say, as a breeder, with any breed, you breed to get better. You don't just stop and free to keep on going. Uh, that's just how it go. I think a lot of people get confused with uh, working uh, working breeds as far as uh, they think just because dogs have certain uh, breeds or certain dogs in their uh, background, accessory, uh, pedigree, should I say, they think that uh, they dog is going to be that without actually putting the work in. Uh, if you can put a dog in the backyard uh, and not bond with the dog and expect the dog to put his all into you. Uh, as far as protection work and uh, things like that, and then even necessarily got to be protection work, just anything you want that dog to do. You can't expect him to give, you, to give him your, uh, his all when you're not giving him uh, yours. That's just how it go uh, in a dog game, and that's kind of how it go in life, period. Uh, when you, same way with kids, like when they say having a dog is like having kids, you uh, train your kid in the direction you want them to be later on in life. Same thing with dogs. You train your dog in the direction that you want him to be. You can't uh, treat a dog like a house pet. Uh, you taking him out, he getting rubbed by everybody. Um, <clears throat> you got him out here with all kind of, it's just, it ain't no wrong with having with
toys, but he's just getting pampered uh, all day, every day, and expect him to be this just total opposite dog, or, or, or just an all-out uh, monster, a uh, killer machine, protection machine. It don't work that way. This dog never been in that scenario. Um, how can you expect him to actually know what to do when it's time comes? That's why people do protection work with the dog. So to ensure that if a threat walk up on us, man, beast, uh, try to break in the house, that this dog is gonna react and react in the right way. Uh, not run off, not just pretend and play the role, do a lot of barking and then when the threat is actually trying to attack, he running off or he's just standing there. You see a lot of videos on YouTube and Facebook a lot of these people getting beat up. Uh, all kind of stuff. And the dog was just standing in that hell. I ain't seen a video where a dog was attacking his own owner. Stuff like that, that ain't supposed to happen. You're supposed to have a bond with your dog that's tight enough that no matter what happens, this dog got your back. He had pretty much died for you. That's really uh, what having a dog is about. It's about having a best friend or pretty much um, a, a controllable weapon. Really, really, uh, that's your best friend. That's uh, not only your best friend, but the people in your house. Um, like I always say to me, having a working dog is like, uh, it's like the person in the world who got a gun. Uh, it's not really the having a gun at River Schedule. It's the not knowing when this guy gonna pull the trigger. Same thing with a working dog. The dog is supposed to be in the house and be cool and be fine. Yeah, he, people know that he there. Uh, people know that this dog can react when well, he should be able to react, but that's the scary part, not knowing that this dog can react, not knowing when this dog can react, not knowing that I don't know what to do. I, I, I could do anything, I could look the dog in the eyes and he, he might go crazy. Or if I can like touch his owner the wrong way, he might go crazy. That's the kind of, that's the reason, the purpose of having a dog. Uh, not the dogs to just sit around the house and eat and use it and, and, and play with the kids all day and not have no kind of protective instinct. Now, when you're getting these different dog breeds, now, of course, every dog ain't bred for the same purpose, but I'm talking about working dog breeds. I'm not talking about poodles and chihuahuas and stuff like that. And even those dogs kind of naturally, when you have a good dog bond, any dog I've kind of seen the little toy dogs and stuff like that, when you got a good bond with, your, uh, when that, with their owner, they be pretty protective too, even though they're not really naturally a protection breed. Uh, but the protection breeds, when you get into the protection breeds, it should be a protection dog. Like a, a, a somebody that walking maybe, I don't know, a, all the way across the street. But I got dogs surrounding my whole house. I don't, I don't know if you can see. It'll kind of seem like where it is. It's around the whole crib. And so nobody can't really get in no kind of way. But they protect them. They make sure nobody ever walks up to their property. Um, that's what a protection dog is supposed to do. And not only they alert them, to keep them right? if somebody ever walked up on my house, or walked up on me, they're gonna react. They're gonna get bit. It's gonna be ugly for them. I guarantee you. Um, they're bred to be that way. Uh, and to me, I think that's the whole point. That's the point of giving pressers and corsos and baubles and feelers and uh board holes and, and breeds like that if they can't do nothing for you first off they're too big of a dog to be feeling to be sitting there uh just not doing nothing some of these dogs get bigger than you uh some of them uh, 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 well definitely some of them get uh bigger than your kids so what's the point of feeding a grown man basically or a grown woman, male or female, whatever dog you get, and he ain't doing nothing for you. It's just like a kid in the house. You feeding the kid till he what? Twenty something. He just he ain't getting no job. He ain't trying to go to school. He ain't doing. You just feeding him. He chilling, just playing video games, uh, 
going out, coming in, whatever you want to. He ain't got to pay no bills. Like, same thing with dogs. Why put effort and money into a dog that's not going to perform? Especially when you're dealing with these big dogs. Because there's a lot more care than feeding a 40-pound pit bull. A lot more food. Uh, a lot more poop. Uh, just a lot more maintenance, period. Uh, with me, I always keep a few dogs at the time because I'm doing a breeding program, but I got a routine, so it's not really, it's hard for me because I've been having a routine for the last few years and everything kind of goes smoothly. I know when the dog's going to use it and uh, be going daily walks. I know if I know if I'm gone for a minute, if they might use it, like, well, for the most time, they don't because I walk them so much on the regular. I got fields, fields all around my house. So we go out to the field and run the field. They go out, use what, use that and stuff like that. But if they not, but uh, if I'm gone, if they do use it, it's getting immediately picked up as soon as I get here. So it's always clean. I always uh, rinse the piss down and stuff like that, bleach it down. Uh, it's always clean. That's another thing when you're dealing with dogs, man. You got to keep your stuff clean, man. You got to keep your stuff in order, keep your dog washed. Uh, keep the area washed. Uh, I put pine and keep pine and cedar in, my, in the dog dog houses and stuff like that. In the summertime too, I keep I put cedar in the dog houses too. And the one time I use uh, straw, but in the summertime I put pine cedar, uh, and that to kind of keep the coat and stuff uh, from not uh, not really smelling too bad too. It's a kind of decent smell as long as you're keeping your dog. Uh, washed on the regular and keeping all the poop and stuff uh, up around the dog. I, uh, the cedar and pine work pretty decent. Uh, it be kind of a struggle getting it up sometimes because they come in and out the dog house. So a lot of it uh, I throw away. So I try to put recycle and just put it back. So if it get wet, then of course I ain't nothing to dry out, nothing like that. I just dump it. But that's another thing, keep your dogs clean. You can't have these dogs and they dress all over the place, uh, land and shit, piss everywhere, smelling like shit. I don't want to have dogs like that, man. Your dog is a representation of you. Uh, like I said, when you're dealing with these dogs, take them like kids. You wouldn't have your kid coming out like that. You don't even want your dog coming out like that. Um, and, and, and then, like I say, train your dog up and how you want your dog to be. If you want your dog to be a worker, you, you, you treat that dog like a worker. You want, you get that dog a job. You make sure that that dog perform for you. You make sure that's the, he, he, that's how he eat every day. He gotta do something for you. If he ain't, he, if he ain't working or he, if he ain't showing nothing, then he don't get fed. In my house, he ain't even gonna be here. That, that's just me. But anyway, uh, I just want to give a little quick, uh, and put an insight on what I thought about people and um, some of these uh, working situations with their dogs and just uh, putting titles on them and ain't really a show or nothing or doing nothing. But anyway, uh, thanks everybody for tuning in. Uh, hit that subscribe button. Um, like I say, I'm trying to do these videos on the regular get people a little input on what's going on with these dogs. Um, I get a lot of people who uh, want to get my input on a lot of their uh, dogs and different dog breeds and stuff like that. So uh, I guess I'm gaining a lot of uh, interest in people. Uh, and that's a great thing. So uh, just stay tuned, stay watching. Um, and I'm out. All right.